Mitya, isn't it time for you to become a man? Laughing, friends asked the young lad. He blushed noticeably, feeling embarrassed. Well, I would like to, but girls avoid me, Mitya replied. They do that because they sense my inexperience. Girls love tough guys, said the charmer. He was riding with his friends in a black BMW, which the group enjoyed driving and fooling around in. Well, then I'll remain a perpetual virgin because it's a vicious circle, Mitya said. Although girls do love brutes, there are those who take matters into their own hands and teach you everything, reassured his new friend, the driver. Mitel had recently moved to this small town. His father held a modest position in Moscow, and Mitya himself was practically a nobody among hundreds of thousands of ordinary teenagers with pimples and a bunch of complexes. In this small town, his status was notable because he was from Moscow. That's what the locals asked him, big and small, so, how is it over there? Mitya didn't understand at first. But now he realized he was playing the fool in Moscow. The truth was that the girls, for some reason, were not rushing to him and opening up their sacred sanctuary. Perhaps it was because I had too many pimples. We need to find an unusual girl, otherwise, we'll have to pay too much for your face, said one of the new friends. I know, we should get Marina, she's blind, another friend suggested. Exactly, she won't see anything, said the charmer. Mitel sat in the car, not understanding who or what they were talking about. He felt uncomfortable, as if he were out of his element. He regretted sharing his problem with his new friends. Marina had been blind since birth. She didn't know why she had never seen her mother, nor did she have any idea who her father was. Marina grew up with her grandmother, but she wasn't sure if her grandmother was really her relative. Marina knew no love or tenderness, she only knew kicks and punches, as her grandmother claimed her mother was a loose woman, and her father lost his eyes during her mother's pregnancy. Marina believed her grandmother and hated her mother, for everything, for her eyes, for the life she was born into. She also hated her father. At first, he made her clean the floors, wash dishes, constantly making her do some cleaning. When Marina grew up, her grandmother brought a man home, and Marina didn't understand that it wasn't normal. The man was drunk and didn't notice that there was nothing there. The next morning, he left, taking the money with him. When Marina's grandmother died, Marina thought she was finally free and could live as she pleased. However, she realized that she didn't know what she wanted or what she was capable of doing. She had no education or skills. The only thing that made Marina happy was that she could keep the money. However, there was one problem. Earlier, when Marina's grandmother managed the money, it was difficult for anyone to deceive the shrewd old woman. But now, anyone who realized that Marina was blind wanted to trick her, hand her a hundred bucks, and leave. Marina rarely held money in her hands, she couldn't distinguish them by touch, and no one had taught her how to do it. Fate brought Marina together with the local wealthy guys. They took her to a mansion where Mitya and his parents lived. At that time, Mitya's parents were away, and they threw a wild party. In the morning, Marina demanded her money from the wealthy guys. They laughed at her disability and made it clear that they wouldn't pay her. She couldn't understand why they were treating her like that when they had money. They simply lacked conscience. Without much thought, the guys grabbed the frightened Marina, took her to the woods, and left her there. They laughed and advised her to talk less. The story is silent about whether that night turned Mitya into a man, as originally intended. When they returned to the mansion, they continued their revelries. Their jaws dropped when Marina walked into the mansion and said, you probably didn't expect me to escape from the woods. Where's my money? Or should I call the police? The wealthy guys quickly regained their composure. How did you get out of the woods? I guess the smell of your rottenness attracted the wolves, Marina said. With those words, a pack of wolves stormed into the mansion. Wolves are strong and powerful creatures. They grabbed the wealthy guys and dragged them into the woods. That's how it happened. When Marina found herself alone in the woods, she naturally started crying. 
She cried out of sorrow, almost howling, cursing her fate. The wolves didn't come out to her cries. They recognized her as their own. Along with the wolves, an old man appeared before her. No one in the area knew that there was a hermit living in the woods. The hermit had managed to hide himself quite well. He lived among the wolves and was their most loyal friend. Marina became the hermit's guest. He took her to his house, intoxicated her with various herbal infusions, and fed her gradually. The poor girl regained consciousness and could speak again. At first, the hermit thought that the poor girl, besides being blind, was also dumb. But no, Marina could speak perfectly well. She didn't hide her past and told the hermit everything that had happened. After listening to Marina's story, the hermit suggested visiting the wealthy guys and seeking revenge. Marina agreed. Like many blind people, Marina had highly developed and heightened other senses. Of course, she couldn't find them by smell alone. She simply remembered the turns well, where they took her to the woods. The arrogant fools didn't even think to drive around the city and confuse the tracks when they took the girl to the woods. The domesticated wolves didn't devour the wealthy guys, they weren't accustomed to feeding on scraps nearby. In the nearby forest, there was a commercial logging area, and the owner was happy to have free labor. That's where the wolves brought the guys. The owner realized they were wolves, he was the only one who knew about the hermit living in the woods, and he knew the hermit wouldn't harm anyone unjustly. Therefore, he didn't rush to release the guys once the hermit decided to punish them. There must have been a reason in something the guys didn't bring with them. When the parents found their children's bodies, they had been working at the logging area for at least a month. Surprisingly, none of the parents confronted anyone or made any accusations. Each of them drew their own conclusions. Mitya's parents sent him to military school, saying that's how one becomes a man. After the mansion rampage, the hermit offered Marina to move in with him. He didn't really care about the girl's past. He was tired of living alone, and Marina didn't care about his appearance. She couldn't see the huge scar on his face that the hermit had acquired after being betrayed by a friend. The hermit and the domesticated wolves retreated into the forest, and no one ever saw them again. Perhaps somewhere in the heavens, it was decided that this strange couple, created for each other, hadn't found their happiness. Friends, do you believe in miracles? If you don't believe it then this story is for you and of course most of you will have a hard time believing what I'm going to tell you today and frankly it's not surprising because this case is unexplainable by science. No one, not even the most seasoned experts, can explain it. This is the touching story of how a criminal breaks into the house of lonely people, one of whom turns out to be his son. Grandfather Edward finds a wolf pup near his home who can't walk. When he inspected it, he found that its leg was injured and had broken off. Apparently, when his mother found him in this desperate situation, she had abandoned him. The grandpa who loves and helps animals very much took the little wolf into his arms and brought him home because he knew that if it kept going like this and lived alone in the wild, it would die soon. Edward immediately took the small animal to the veterinarian. Immediately after the veterinarian's inspection, Edward took the wolf cub home, put it near the heater, and took care of it all the time. Grandpa has been retired for several years, but he didn't stay in the city to live. So he decided to go back to his hometown in the village, go hunting in the forest and enjoy the nature. He also planted many fruit trees in her yard. She is passionate about tending his flower-filled orchard. His wife died while old man Edward was still in town. As for his only son, he went to the institute to continue his studies, but he never came back, nor did he contact him to check on the situation. The boy has a life of his own and has completely forgotten about his father, leaving Edward grieving the loss of contact with his son, but still wanting him to be a successful young man in his life. A few months passed, and the old man's wolf grew up and became his best friend. This animal loves its owner very much and never leaves him. He often hunted with him in the woods, and he also guarded the house, circling around it at night to protect it from strangers. Edward has always considered the wolf family, allowing him to sleep on the second floor of the house. 
He called it Victor and was keen to buy him meat, milk and sausages from the village, and he gave the wolf a home where it could get warmth and food. He also took him to the orchard to help himself. Edward told the villagers that he considered the wolf to be his family and close friend. Victor has gradually transformed into a huge, ferocious wolf, a dire wolf, and despite his vicious appearance, he doesn't hurt anyone. He did everything he was told to do, only attacking when Edward ordered him to. Some villagers thought the wolf was timid and cowardly because it was always calm, but in fact, it was just following the orders of its master. In the middle of the night, when Edward was sleeping in bed, he heard footsteps outside. So, he got up and wanted to find out. As Edward approached the stairs, he heard what appeared to be people talking to each other. Then they went up the stairs and were surprised to find an old man waiting for them. Edward felt that these people might be thieves and wanted to steal things from his house, but by the time he confirmed the identities of the three, it was beyond redemption. These people were in a state of distress, and upon closer inspection, they were all young men in uniform and dirty clothes. They were out of breath, as if they had run a long way. Father Edward kept staring at them, only to realize that they had just escaped from prison and were going to rob his house. He asked the trio to leave his house immediately, but they apparently refused. Then he took a step back, hurried to the kitchen to get the rifle, and at the same time took out his mobile phone to call the police. But one of the thieves took the opportunity to attack him, slamming him to the ground, taking his mobile phone and his rifle, leaving him alone on the ground. Grandpa wanted to get up and cry wolf, but the thieves handcuffed his hands, taped his mouth over his mouth, and left, leaving him there. They began searching the house for money and valuables. When the three entered the kitchen, Edward recognized one of the thieves from his back as his son. He was taken aback, not understanding what his son was doing here or why he was here. He left 17 years of his studies at the academy, and he should have lived in the city. Seeing what his son did, the old man was very angry and grateful. Thank God his wife didn't live to see what became of her son. The mother had dreamed of seeing her son become an engineer, but she died when he was 10, leaving him to study in the city. Edward has given up hope that these bad guys will be caught, and he has been looking at his son with tears in his eyes. But suddenly, his wolf appeared. When he saw his master in this situation, he just kept watching him and the thief, but didn't attack because he was waiting for his master's signal as usual. Grandpa moved his head slightly, and the wolf understood, and immediately charged at the three thieves viciously, threw them to the ground, and bit them at different places on their bodies. Two terrified thieves managed to escape from the wolf's mouth, their legs dripping with blood, and escaped directly through the window, while the third remained in the wolf's mouth. Ironically, that man was Edward's son. When the old man found out that the wolf was going to kill his son, he told the wolf to stop. He picked up the phone, called the police again, and told what happened at home. Immediately afterwards, he checked his son and found that he had lost a lot of blood. So he began to bandage his son's wound, trying to stop the bleeding. Edward held his son's hand and wanted to help him, but on the other hand, he also realized that his son was not the good person he hoped when he met him before. After the police arrived, Edward was arrested and sent to the hospital immediately. They then began a search operation to apprehend his escaped friend, and within hours, they succeeded. After receiving the necessary medical treatment, the police returned them to the prison from which they escaped. The grandfather stayed in his house with the loyal wolf who intervened at the right moment to save him and the house from these evil people. He later learned that his son was back in prison with his colleagues, who had doubled their sentences. It is clear that the son did not complete his studies at the institute. Instead, he joined a gang and started selling drugs and robbing houses, which got him caught by the police multiple times and sentenced to 10 years in prison. What happened was that his son's wife separated from him, she took Edward's grandson to another city, then married another man, and had a child. Edward tried to forget his son altogether, but one day, as he was sitting and playing with his wolf, he heard a knock at the door. Opening the door, he found a child. The child asked the old man if his name was Edward, 
and when the grandfather answered him, he told him that his name was John and that he was his grandson. The grandfather didn't speak, looked at the little boy, and found that he really looked like his son. The little boy told his grandfather that his mother had died of a serious illness, leaving him to live with his stepfather. On his deathbed, she asked him to live with his grandfather, so he came to him. He was delighted when his grandfather offered to let his grandson live with him. He immediately greeted him, allocated a small room in the house, and took care of him all the time. The grandfather is amazed by the harmony and understanding shown between the grandson and the wolf. Within days, they were snuggling together and becoming inseparable. The grandfather, who was reunited with his family after losing hope earlier, would love to take care of him and enjoy the rest of his life with the wolf and his grandson John.